Hey there, people. How the frig's it going? It's 7.30 in the morning on a Thursday. We had a one hell of a thunderbanger last night. Holy crap. They're calling for rain at 11 p.m. But I really wasn't expecting all the loud bangs. You know, I can sleep through rain, but when you get surprise thunderclaps to happen, it kind of startles you back awake. Normally, I usually don't start filming at this time, but uh, I'm filming at this time because today we're going to try and make the, the accidental recipe that uh, I came across the other day. And that's going to be the protein pancakes. Uh, basically, what this recipe that I invented, well, that I accidentally invented. I don't know, maybe somebody else already made this. I really don't know. This was me screwing around making my anabolic French toast and I came across this idea and it worked out. But I'm going to use 400 grams of egg whites and two scoops of whey protein, one teaspoon of cinnamon blended together and I'll show you the outcome. Before blending it literally looks like sort of like a lemon meringue pie. However, after blending, it looks like the thickest damn freaking milkshake you'll ever eat. Alright, pan's preheated and I greased it with some Pam coconut oil. Let's go ahead and pour a pancake and see what happens. We'll just let that cook up, then we'll try and flip it. Now if this doesn't work, it could be that maybe I added too much egg. Keep in mind, I always use 250 to two scoops. And I accidentally added too much egg today because I got ambitious. Also, I don't know why my pan doesn't sit flat on the stove. It never has. First flip. Kind of looks like a pancake. Alright, they're more like crepes than pancakes, but uh, I would say they look pretty damn good. Now, obviously, the macros are going to be different for anybody who does it, depending on what protein powder you're using. I'm using this Revolution, uh, Revolution Highway. But, you know, if you're using like Diesel or or whatever other brand out there, ON or Six Star, whatever you're using, obviously your macros are going to be different than mine. The only consistency, consistency with our recipes is the egg whites. Because uh, No Name Egg Whites, the Simply Egg Whites that I buy, uh, this one here. When I buy, ended up buying the little small cartons of the No Name stuff, the macros were the same because egg whites are egg whites are egg whites are egg whites there's no way to get around it except for a company who makes a protein egg white which is it's still egg whites but they add i think they add like whey powder to it to boost the protein score for people who are looking for that anabolic edge and i've never been able to find that kind i kind of wish i could because it's a little bit cheaper than buying the big cartons like i'm doing of egg whites Oh damn, that one looks awesome! Because it's like literally a 1.5 liter jug of egg whites for 10 bucks. I'm paying... Uh, no, actually, you know what? I take it back. It's not a better deal because I'm paying 5 bucks for a liter. And yeah, that's a better deal. And I shit my pants. Now there was a myth on how much protein the body can absorb in any given meal and that it just discards anything it can't. Um, it turns out that's just a myth, but the problem is, is if you do eat too much protein in a day, uh, it really goes, puts hell on your kidneys. So the rule of thumb is one pound of body weight uh, per gram of protein in a day is the recommended allotment. So that you don't slaughter your poor kidneys because you kind of need those to process liquids. You know, you know how it is. Is it going to rain today? Yes. Today in North Bay, there's a very high chance of rain from now until around 10 p.m. Yeah, you're telling me there's a high chance. Holy crap, look at it out there. Anyway, people, we are pretty much out of batter now. We have a little stack here of flapjacks. Go ahead and flip this one here and uh, we'll have to go eat. Oh, that surface area. So nice. Alright guys, we got a stack here of about five pancakes. Gonna throw some syrup to it. I got no butter, but I never use butter. Throw some syrup to it. We'll go upstairs. We'll try the center face. Doesn't that look awesome though? It looks like the real deal. Oh, yes. 
Accidental pancake protein recipe. I'm so excited. All right, guys, it might sound stupid to be exciting for something like pancakes for a lot of you, but you don't understand when you've been on a uh, re restricted carb diet for so long, and then you're finally allowed to have carbs again because you hit your goal, and then you decide to not have pancakes, but then you come across a recipe that's this friggin' intense, you kind of get excited. So let's go ahead and cut up a lot of these. Oh my goodness. Look, look at that. Jeez, oh, I'm dripping on my phone. Crap. All right, down the hatch, boys. Mmm. That tastes just like pancakes. Just like pancakes. And the macros for this. Let's go ahead and calculate those right now real quick. Oh my god, that is fantastic. I can't believe it. So where are my eggs? So I made a big batch today. Which um, was 400 grams of eggs. Which was 190 calories. And three scoops of high whey. So today's breakfast was 670 calories. 24 grams of carbs. 12 grams of fat. 110 grams of protein. Holy shit. That's a little bit intense. But let me tell you, tastes damn good. It's gonna help her build these muscles. Right on. Bye, I'm going to eat. All right guys, lunch break. I took my first break already. It's currently 12.05 ish. Today is garbage day, and I never put my garbage out at the side of the road. It's also stopped raining finally, so that's good. And I made a pot of coffee earlier and I forgot to grab it. And then it turns out that I still had a lot of coffee left in my my little coffee pot thing that I fill up and bring upstairs so when I want more coffee I don't have to go on break or anything to do it. But uh, right now what I'm gonna do, I'm not really hungry, I'm actually still kind of full from those freaking pancakes. I'm not gonna lie, they really, uh, they really worked. But I bought this chicken and I wanted to cook up a couple pieces for lunch to uh, get more prouts into the body. All right, we'll get that chick air and chick, no, chicken. That's better. Air frying. And might as well let the dog out too. Sometimes when I hook them up, I feel like I'm hooking up bait for musky fishing. Is that bad to think that way about my dog? I don't know. My friend's brother actually has a cat named Musky, but the real name for it is Musky Bait because uh, I guess at one point the cat was small, but now the cat's so big, it's shaped like a watermelon. It's friggin' awesome. I love fat cats, they're fun. You know what, even though I don't have a full can of garbage, I'm still just gonna send it because why the frig hang on to it? Doesn't make any sense. Take it out to the road, get rid of it, and remember to come and grab the can as soon as they pick it up because holy shit, we could get rain at any given time. Any freaking given time, boys. Because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do this weekend, I think I might, uh, Spend Saturday and start dealing with this nonsense before this area here turns into like that area over there. I do need to deal with that again. This has all pretty much fallen back from me weed whacking it and dropping down the uh, the stuff. Needs another treatment. But these tall things, luckily, they're not spiky and they don't root that well. So they're easy to pull. And just grip, pull, grip, pull, grip, pull, grip, pull. You know, so I'll be able to pull all those up. I just can't bring the mower in here because I've hit too many rocks with the mower and it's getting to the point where if I keep doing that, I'm gonna need a new lawnmower very, very, very soon. But a lot of these tall, stupid plants I can just do exactly what I've been doing. Oh, except when you grab multiples, you tend to break them. Grip and pull. Just destroy them. It's the only plan I have. Yeah, that won't take long to do. Look at that. Okay, you got a bunch of them. I'm just throwing them here. They'll rot. All right, well, I freaked around out here for a bit. I need to get back inside. Don't even know what time it is. But I do know 
that uh, that chicken is going to be really good. Even though, after eating all that protein, I'm not even hungry. This is why I say, if you're eating a regular diet, just have a lot of protein. But not in the form of dog. Also this weekend, my friend found a new fishing hole. Kind of off the beaten path, but it's by a waterfall and apparently it's a good bass score. So we might go check that out. Obviously I'll bring you guys along with me. You know, I really like my GoPro Hero 4 over the Session, just because it has a better microphone. I find the Session, it just, it falls flat and it, I don't know, it's weird. I'm just gonna rock a quick piss and then we'll go upstairs and I'll show you the, the Session 4 versus the Hero 4 and the audio quality and you'll get what I'm talking about. Now be advised, I do only have the GoPro Hero 4 Silver, not the black. At the time when I bought it, the reason why I didn't buy the black is because the black was like, I think it was like 600 bucks and the silver was like 350 or something like that. And the only difference is, is the silver can do 4K, but only at like 15 frames per second or some really low rate. So it kind of makes it not usable where the black could do 4K at, uh, at 30 frames per second. But at the time 4K was a new thing and nobody really used it often because it was brutal. The processing power to render the video was really, really high up there and being such a new format there was no, no transcoder to really make it easier to work with. So you needed one hell of a rig to be able to work with it and a lot of people just used their GoPros in 1080p mode because it was better. But let's go ahead, I'm going to shoot a difference comparison between the GoPro Hero 4 Silver and the GoPro Session. So, or Session 4, or whatever the frig it's called. Do I have a memory card in this thing? Alright guys, so here's the voice coming over the Canon. Here's the voice coming over the GoPro Hero 4. And here's the voice coming over the GoPro Hero Session. So you get an idea, like if you look at them side by side, you can see the difference. Like, obviously this one here is a lot smaller than this one here. But the audio quality on the two is like night and day, I find. But you be the judge. You let me know what you think. I don't know. It'd be really nice if I could use this here for more stuff. Problem is, is the uh, the port on it to charge it and to pull the data from. She's pretty gummed up, right? Because I used it that one time in a Weed Whacker video where I had it mounted to the Weed Whacker. And uh, it's this port over here that's the one you charge with. And the other one's the Mini HDMI. And you can see the smut around the Mini HDMI that's pretty there. And there's a lot of it inside of the actual charging port and the data port. So it'll charge, it'll receive a charge, but the data lines aren't making connection. So in order to pull the data off the camera, I always have to pull the memory card, plug it into my Insignia memory card reader here, and pull the data that way. Pain in the ass, but this camera's so much better. People always ask me why I love my air fryer. Look at that chicken. It's so moist, it's so good. It always makes perfect chicken. Best damn invention ever. Get an air fryer today. Just found a tutorial on how to clean out these ports, so I'm gonna go give it a try right now. And then I need to run outside. Actually, I'm gonna run outside first and grab my garbage can even though it's raining. So I'm gonna leave the camera in here. I'm gonna try and clean this out and see if we can get it to work. So basically what's suggested is you take a toothpick and you whittle it down so it's flat enough to get in there and pry out all the debris. And you also use one of these like short hair bristle brushes with some isopropyl alcohol, liquid gold to clean out the terminal. Now as you can see it obviously charges from it. But when I turn the camera on to do a file transfer, it shows that it's USB connected. Then it just cuts back over to this screen. You heard the sound of it connecting to the computer, but it never actually does. Like when I plug in the session and turn it on, it shows up there, Hero 4 Session. This used to show up as Hero Silver. Now it doesn't. I've tried two different cables on it. I don't even know if the cables work. That's the problem. And it's micro USB, not, or yeah, mini USB, not micro. Is it micro or mini? Whichever one's not the smallest, that's the one it is. It's old school. Uh, micro. Yeah, it's bullshit. God, the way it smells outside and this weather, you would never guess it's July 16th today. You would totally think it's like mid-September, early October. It is weird out. I totally want to go for a bike ride, but not in the rain. Wow, just ridiculous weather. At least there's a cool breeze coming in the window. You probably hear that over the mic. All right, guys, last friggin' break of the day. Yeah, we're getting there. Four o'clock, tomorrow's half day freaking Friday. 
I got some work I got to do tonight for the test tomorrow. There was a pre-test that I was supposed to do that I didn't realize I had to do. And so the company that's doing the testing for this company, they do two tests. They do one which is like these like weird, uh, like you have a line like this, and then on the next picture you have a line like this. Then you have on the other picture you have a line going down, and then the fourth one goes question like what would the line be? So logically, if one's on top, boom, boom, the next one would be boom, right? Like, like they show you different things or they'll have like a shape and they'll turn it turn it turn it and you got to pick a b c d what would be the next logical choice that was the first test this test here i think they put you in scenarios and see how you react to get a gauge on your psyche to see if you are qualified to handle the stressful environments of said workplace so i'm kind of anxious to see how this plays out but anyway, this rain apparently, uh, well, let's ask the old hockey puck here what she thinks. Is it gonna rain tomorrow? No, it won't rain tomorrow in North Bay. It'll be sunny with a high of 29 and a low of 17. Well, that's not too bad. I wonder, is it gonna rain on Saturday? Yes, it'll rain in North Bay Saturday from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Well, that's not too bad, we'll have all day. All right, cool, I like that, I dig that. Is it gonna rain on Sunday? Yes, it'll rain in North Bay Sunday from 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. Holy, 4 a.m. to 10 p.m.? So literally from 10 p.m. on Saturday until 10 p.m. on Sunday, she's going to piss. Well, ain't that prime. Well, I was going to do some cleanup in the kitchen, but you know what? I got a better idea. Frig it, we'll save it for Sunday. <laughs> I'm not going to do shit in this kitchen. It's going to do my dishes, clean up the counter, wipe it all down. Nope, that's not a Sunday job while it's pissing rain and I gotta be stuck in the house. So tomorrow, I work, like I said, half day freaking Friday. So I get off at uh, noon, but I gotta be back in the house by five. So seeing how tomorrow's gonna be a nice day afternoon, I may go play in the backyard and pull some weeds, clean that up. Like I said, I gotta be back here by five so I can take my test for this new job. Yeah, anyway, I guess there is a bonus to uh, with the job I have right now is I get to work from home. And I'm hoping that once everything's all said and done and the pandemic's over, that they realize that there's no real reason to have an office space and they just let us stay like this. Because if I do have to do this job and I can still do it from home, like I say, that's gonna save me a lot of money and that makes this job actually valuable. So, the ability to never have to go into the office or leave my house is pretty good. And then on the weekends, and then I can plan for weekend adventures and do fun things on the weekends. Maybe I could still upload a video every day, but just shoot everything over the weekend and have seven videos made up over one little period of time. You know, they'd be shorter videos, but People seem to tune in more to shorter videos than longer videos. They seem kind of intimidated by the long videos. It is what it is, but this is all stuff that I can figure out at a later time. Let's see what happens when we get through this whole COVID-19 phase 3, 17, 35,968 or whatever the hell we're, I don't even know what the hell I just said. Anyway, I'm gonna head back upstairs, get signed back in and uh give her tonight for dinner guys we're gonna do hamburgers but we're gonna put a twist to it instead of using bread buns we're gonna use lettuce buns why because today's a mother freaking low carb day boys better batter have at her talk to you in a bit protein Alrighty, guys i don't think it's worth the effort of going to get another cable for that freaking camera i'm pretty sure the port itself is fried anyway it's after work we're done we're done for the day Friggin' game over. Tomorrow's half day freaking Friday, and then it's Testarossa time, which makes no sense, and not even in my brain. But it's a test time to do testing. I think my dog wants to go outside. It's pissing rain out so hard right now, but I think he wants to go outside. He doesn't realize, because he's been cooped up since all day until I took him out that one time to do the garbage. So, you guys wanna see something funny? Watch what happens when I let him out while it's raining. Ready? Steady? Go down. And go have fun. See, it's raining and he's just like, oh man, this sucks. And I'm just gonna stick my face inside of this grass. I'm gonna pee. And as soon as I'm done, I don't even care if I have to poop, I'm gonna come back up and ask to come back inside. There he goes. 
And now he'll hang out there because it's dry. But now, now I do this. Oreo, go poop. Okay, I'll go poop. I don't want to poop though because now my sexy fur is getting all unsexy with the rain. <laughs> Such a little minion. Remember the one day we were getting that super heavy downpour and I I opened the door and he ran outside and as soon as he ran outside he just like slams on the brakes and comes running right back in the house. I'm like, no, no, you got to go outside. He literally went outside and shit right where he's sitting. You going back in? Want to come in the house? Want some bacon? Yeah? You want some bacon? Yeah? Want to come in? Want some cat? Want some chicken? Want some bacon? Okay. I shouldn't tease you too bad, right? Bacon? Stepping on his leash. I just freaking guillotined my dog. It's funny because if you get some of the freeze frames when he barks, he looks like he's saying, no, no, no. And then I just want to make memes of it and I'm probably going to do that. Uh, you know what the problem is? Guys, I haven't eaten that much today as far as calories go. It's been, because it's been so high in protein and pretty much low on everything else, like carbs are probably what? I think I eaten. Let's check the old uh, friggin' thing here. Protein's very satiating. I've eaten 859 calories today. And out of that is 24 grams of carbs, 14 grams of fat, and 153 grams of protein. So, here's the thing. I'm not even hungry right now. That's the ultimate weight loss diet. But you can't sustain it. Because after a while, your body will think something's wrong. And your metabolism will go into starvation mode and you'll stop burning fat and you'll start getting very 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 weak literally this these high protein quick shunt diets if you will to basically shunt fat out fast are not long term they're short term very short term but um you know do it for five days and then carry on with your regularly scheduled program uh because otherwise your body will be like, hey, what the hell's really going on here? But let me tell you, it's a good way to get into ketosis. A lot of people are like, oh, you won't get into ketosis if you eat too much protein. Your body will just break it down into carbs. No, it breaks it down into glucose and it's supposed to do that because some of your components in your body require sugar. And it gets it from protein. It's pretty sweet. I like how the body can adapt to nonsense and bullshit. It makes the body good, like milk. All right, well, I'm gonna eat something because, um, yeah, it's supper time. Man, it sucks that it's raining out. I really wanted to go biking. But tomorrow I'll be able to go for a quick little rip or do something before my test. And I don't know how long that test takes. They said a lot, at least two hours. So I'll be getting off of that at around seven and then go from there. See if we do anything in the evening. Oh, this is my last loaf of beef. And by beef, I mean chicken. And by chicken, I mean turkey. One day I'll figure out what a bird is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make four burgers, or four burger patties, and we're just gonna use lettuce to wrap them. Put some mustard on them, drop them in my vice hole. This is like a keto thing. The lettuce wrap burgers. You probably heard people talk about it. It's so easy. I've been watching these videos online lately of people who are like, uh, cause I've been watching a lot of fishing videos trying to get ideas for, you know, learn how to fish. And one of the th videos I watched today was, uh, well actually a couple of the videos I watched today. I was on live chat, so I usually have YouTube playing in the background while I'm helping clients. Holy crap, doing this one handed was not easy today. Anyway. So um, one of the videos I watched was uh, a 72 hour I'll only eat what I catch video and it was funny because like 12 hours into the video Buddy is complaining that he's so hungry and if he doesn't eat he's going to pass out from lack of food exhaustion and blood sugar and blah 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 and I'm thinking like 
Unless you have a medical condition, like you're, you, you have a blood sugar issue or you're like hypoglycemic or you know, that, that's a blood sugar issue or you're diabetic, type one, not type two, then chances are, if you have none of those conditions, your body's fine. You're gonna feel a little laggy at first while your body's going into a state of ketosis, but that goes away. Here's the thing about hunger. Hunger is just a hormone. It's a hormone that's triggered when your body runs out of glucose and has to resort to going to the stores, to the glycogen stores, to pull from there. It's an alarm saying, hey, we're out of freaking radical glucose. We want some more. We're switching over to fat and we're gonna start pulling from the stores to feed the, net, the, the organs that require glucose to run. Theoretically, you can run for a long time in ketosis if you're fat. If you have a lot of, oh, I just started. If you have a high percentage of fat, you can go for a long freaking time without feeding, no problem. Like I said, I did it for 31 days last year just to see, or last year or the year before, was it last year? I don't even know what freaking day it is today for crying out loud, stupid freaking. Anyway, yeah, it was last year. It was January, 2019. I just didn't eat, went the whole freaking year or a whole month, 31 days. Well, I ate on the 30 on January 31st, but um, I did a little New Year's here at the house, had some beers, and then basically fasted all the way through. And then, uh, no, I didn't drink. You know, did I? No, I didn't. No, no, I didn't. That's right. And it was freaking crazy. Like the hunger hormones settle. Everything's based on timing. If you're used to getting up in the morning and having breakfast and then having lunch at a certain time and having dinner at a certain time, your body will naturally trigger hunger hormones at those times to remind you to feed because that's when you feed. If you ignore them after about an hour or two, they will subside. If you want to get them to subside quicker, do some activity. Get up and walk around. Uh, just go for a bike ride, uh, whatever. Just do something. Even light cardio, like what I'm doing now, pacing back and forth. After a while, your body will ignore the uh, hunger hormone and it'll just go, okay, well, forget it. We won't bother feeding yet. We, we got to, you know, make sure these muscles that are propelling us around town are, you know, doing their job and we'll get food one of these days. We'll just wait for the next cycle. And I was thinking, it's like, yeah, I should do that too. All right, guys, 72 hours. I'm only going to eat what I catch or eat what I forage and I could just not eat for 72 hours and win because I've done it multiple times for fun. And I know some of you are probably saying like, Adam, you fasted for 31 days and you never freaking made a video about it. Are you crazy? Like that would have been good content. Well, to be fair, the reason why I never made a video about it is because I just didn't want to be judged by what I was doing. Like if people knew why I was fasting for 31 days, they would have been like, wow, that's that's stupid. Because honestly, when I started losing weight on keto and I started seeing it drop fast, I got excited. And then when it stopped dropping and it slowed right down, and then at one point it plateaued and it started going, it was teeter-tottering between going down and then going back up and then going down and then going back up. And I did that first five day bone broth fast and it caused it to drop drastically and then continue dropping afterwards. That excited me. And then I did the 10 day, I did a five day normal fast with just water and black coffee. And then after that, I did the 15 day fast. And then I pulled that 31 day and the 15 day fast or the 10 day fast. I put on YouTube fasting for 10 days. And I remember I, I was losing my mind halfway through it. And then I started drinking sodium. Like I was about ready to break it and go and freaking get some chicken fingers or something. And cause I really wanted something salty. And then I came home and I just added salt to water and drank it and everything leveled off and I was like, okay, that worked really well. So then that's when I realized that um, sodium and potassium water is an awesome tool for fasting. And that's pretty much what I did for the entire month of January was I drank and it was a modified version of the snake juice. I was buying, um, that's where this came from. This is a huge frigging container, not a huge container, but a container of, of matcha green tea so I put a teaspoon of that in my uh, my big um, my big bubba keg my 40 ounce or whatever the hell it is I'd put in four ice cubes scoop of that uh, a, 
a tablespoon of uh, salt, a tablespoon of no salt, potassium, uh, a quarter tablespoon of cayenne pepper, uh, some apple cider vinegar, and that maca. Blend it all together and it literally came out this like swamp juice looking green liquid. And I just drank that all day, every day. Wake up in the morning, I would make it the night before in the bubba keg, throw it in the fridge because even though they say they're good for 24 hours of keeping the water at that uh, at a cold temperature maybe when they're brand new but after a while not so much i'd rather trust a yeti than i would a bubba keg but the bubba keg is big and holds a lot of fluid so that's kind of sweet so yeah that's what uh, i basically did just <laughs> drank a modified version of snake juice over 31 days and first three days sucked and then after that it got very 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 easy and i remember 31 days i dropped 47 pounds and then when I came back to eating I put on eight so 39 pounds in 31 days that's not too bad but I'm pretty sure a lot of it was muscle because when I started lifting weights again I noticed I couldn't move as much as I could before like I remember back in at the end of 29 uh, 2018 with that big bow flex I was able to put all the big rods on the uh, I was able to put 180 per side 360 total and just throw it around and press it and not even have any problems to the point where uh, I remember Joss got me those there's one of them right there these really big friggin uh, clamps or whatever the hell they're called she's got to come over and inspect when I'm filming because that's what cats do you gotta put your face on that is that what you're gonna do you're such a mouth face just trying to be on camera. Yet somebody comes over and you want to run and hide because you're just a little dork. Yeah, you're just a little dork face. But yeah, one of these things. She got me two of those. So what I was doing was I was clamping the um, all the power rods together on it and then hooking, them, hooking that onto the hook. But then I realized you don't need to do that because if you just load the power rods on one at a time, they'll actually fit. Yeah! I was able to do it and then all of a sudden after the fast I could barely move the one like the 250s the um, I put the 250s on there the 100 pounds and I'd bench that and I'd be devastated after 10 reps and I was like okay wow that really did some damage to my muscles so that's why when I see these people online like Thomas Delure and all that talking about fasting and using fasting to grow muscles because it boosts your growth hormone here's the big problem with that when you haven't fed in a while and you start beating the shit out of your muscles lifting weights in a fasted state, you are literally doing so much damage to your muscle and putting yourself at risk of injury. Also, you're nowhere near moving as much potential as you could if you were fed. And the biggest thing is the risk of injury because if you get injured li uh, lifting, then that means during recovery you're not lifting and yeah, you're losing all your progress if that's your thing now mind you i at the time when i did the fasting i didn't really care about losing the muscle all i wanted to do was not be fat anymore because like when you spend your whole life like 40 at the time 39 years 40 years as a fat guy always having a gut on you and no neck and buffalo head and you know you, you just you you want to not be fat <laughs> so when you start losing weight and even if you're using drastic measures like uh, intermittent or extended fasting and you're getting progress you kind of sort of stick to it regardless of what you're sacrificing whether it's muscle fat you know you kind of don't care all you notice is the number on the scales are going down this is also the reason why i quit weighing myself as much i'll weigh myself once a week just to make sure the numbers aren't going up heavily but i'm done being crazy about the scale like I still got some belly fat I want to get rid of but honestly I've been averaging around 220 to 225 I don't mind that weight at six foot two 220 good enough good stuff doctor wants me to be a buck 90 I told him he's off his rocker at a buck 90 I'll look like I'm a freaking like a sickie or something like I got to go to the hospital and spend my time there getting platelets done and shit I don't want that no, I think 220 is a good weight. You know, I feel good. I can do stuff. I can mow my lawn. I can walk around freely. I can ride my bike. I can 
fish, I can do everything. Fat Adam wouldn't have been doing any of this stuff. Fat Adam would have never entered a charity bike run. Are you kidding me? Speaking of which, guys, we're at $750 on the charity bike run, which means now in the month of August, I got to bike 750 kilometers. Holy shit. I'm literally going to wake up at 5 a.m., jump on my bike, and ride till 7.30, and then come home, have a shower, eat something, work till 5, and depending on how many kilometers I do in the morning, I'm going to get back out there and hammer it out again. Like, I'm, I'm going to have to. I have no choice. I'm going to have to friggin' ride like I've never ridden before and try and get as many kilometers in as possible on sunny days because August is notorious for being rainy. I'm just going to have to friggin' go all in to win. Luckily, the first two weekends in, uh, or the first weekend in August, I think, is a long weekend. So I'll have three days to ride as long as it doesn't piss poor. That's also what sucks, eh? It's like I work all week, Monday to Friday. We had some nice weather throughout the week there. It's, it was overcast, but at least it wasn't raining. And the weekend comes and it decides to piss poor. Like, frig off, man. Let me have my weekend for crying out loud. Stupid friggin' mother nature just cack lacking. All right, people, this is what I'm gonna do. I got uh, a bunch of taco leaves of lettuce here. And I got these burgers. So I'm gonna bring this upstairs with the mustard and I'm just gonna make them as I eat them. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually chop these burgers probably in half. I made four of them. It's gonna be like eight. So what I'm gonna do, take a piece of burger, take a piece of lettuce, put burger in lettuce, and then grab my mustard, squirt some, mu squirt some mustard onto it, like a so, and then somehow fold it over like this and make like a lettuce wrap burger and down the hatch. Low carb, high protein, can't go wrong. Where the hell was that all today? Look at this sun out there, people. My goodness, 7.30 at night and now we're getting sunshine? Freak sakes. Well, no, it's nice, so I might as well let the dog out so he could take a power dump. Because, you know, the grass might be wet, but uh, at least the sky isn't falling. Oh, man, I didn't realize how long this vlog was. She's a long one, that's for sure. But, we'll probably let the dog out and then we'll end it and get on with tomorrow. Yeah, wait till you see the macros on today. Friggin' nuts. I think tomorrow I'm gonna take my weed whacker and clean all around here again. Got the raspberry bushes coming out of the friggin' hole. <coughs> gotta, gotta do something about that. Knock all that vegetation back, all the shit between the cracks back. Somebody said boil water and pour it on it and it should kill the root system. I think I might go one step further, reach down with some gloves, grab it and rip. I don't know, tomorrow we're off at noon. I don't need to go for a bike ride. I can probably keep myself busy around here getting things done. And Saturday, like I say, it's going to be pretty okay throughout the day. And then at 10 o'clock at night, they're calling for, for storms until 10 o'clock the following night. I'm going to play tomorrow by ear. Wake up, do my work, get off work, and just see what we get up to. I say I do want to do that yard work. I definitely want to get that out of the way. Bacon. Bacon. Bacon? No, down. Bacon. 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 Alright, well I just annoyed my dog by saying the word bacon. Bacon, 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 bacon. See, if I'm not looking at him and saying it, he doesn't care. But if I do this, give him the chance to make a scene, bacon. See, now he's making a scene. Because now he knows the camera's on him and I'm paying attention. Yeah, 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 what? What do you think? Why? That was quite the bark. Bacon! What else do you do with a little dog, right? Anyway, people, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click the like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, down below the go. And it's a good thing I got that scene because the sun is gone and it's overcast again. Yay!
All right, guys, until next time, stay safe and peace freak out. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.